Good day, everyone. Um, as uh, demanded and uh, requested by some of our subscribers, um, I I need to go back with uh, the basic of uh, flow charting because there are several um, subscribers who requested me to give more examples on programming problems and uh, somehow uh, uh, formulate a flow chart based on programming problems and then uh, do some programming code after flow charting okay and uh, um, I promised them to have this video so um, I am here today um, we'll try to discuss some simple programming problems for you to really digest the technicalities and the behavior of um, flow charting as a tool in, in programming okay and uh, I hope um, at the end of this video uh, I'll be able to to share to you guys the, the basic of flow charting the, the importance of flow charting and uh, eventually uh, on, on your part as a uh, as uh, learners of C programming language, uh, you learn this uh, topic and eventually in your programming journey, you can use this technique, right? Because um, ideally, when you are to create programs, you have to start with flowcharting, flowchart. Because from flowchart, analysis will start. And then if you're done with the flowchart, then it would be easier for you to to create or to code and uh, convert that into a program okay so um, this is it um, I I have selected um, five problems right um, all are all these problems are actually uh, very simple programming problems but then uh, my concern is not on the the programming side but on the flow charting side okay because uh, those subscribers were requested to go back and to give us simpler uh, examples of flow chart uh, I'm sure after this discussion you'll, you'll get to know more about charting okay so this is our first problem write a C program to take an integer number of from the user and print it on the screen so our program will will be uh, asking for an integer value all right and then from that integer value that is being entered by the user, our program will then display. All right? So that's it. Okay. Um, so this is the this is the, the, the problem, right? A C program to take an integer number and uh, from the user and print it on the screen. So at first, we'll be using this uh, um, terminal, alright? Terminal, we'll, we'll try to uh, increase this one. So, this is actually the terminal box, right? And uh, start, I'm sorry. Then followed by our program will take or we will ask for an integer value so we'll be using this process box okay because uh, we need to we need to declare our our variables okay. so um, we can say declare uh, what integer value declare i all right and then after all this declaration, uh, you'll be using this uh, display, display uh, uh, input output box, okay, input output box. Right. So I'm trying to 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 adjust the size of the boxes for uh, 
to make it uh, readable for on, on your part as uh, viewers. Okay. So we'll be asking for we'll be asking for um, an integer value. So read i. Okay. So we 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 declare i as our as our uh, integer uh, variable. All right and eventually we'll be asking value from the keyboard from the user and store it to i after asking for the value of i uh, what's next our program will then print it on the screen okay so um we can uh, have a, cap a copy of this one okay sign here and then uh display display i are you following okay and uh what's next no more so meaning we 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 have to sorry we'll just copy this one we have to terminate the program so terminate the program we'll try to decrease the size of our screen okay we need to terminate the program so we can say it's stop or end all right we can say stop it's okay start and stop and then for our flowchart to have a direction or for uh for us to uh to understand the flow of our program we need to connect all these boxes into a flow line right so We'll try to increase. So we'll okay. So we'll click this one flow lines and then move in here. All right. So that's it. And uh, we can, uh, you know, we can just copy you know okay so it's in here and then an another flow lines in here I hope you're following okay then move down another flow lines here after asking for the value you have to display it and then after displaying eventually our program will exit and it goes to the stop terminal or terminal box okay so this is now the flow chart all right for the program to take an integer number which we tend to use i and then after asking a particular value we'll display it on the screen okay so if we are going to create a program on this uh, we of course we, we have to start with this this line right and then in main are you following i'm sorry and then we'll try to declare i okay okay declare i then what's next read line read i meaning we will we'll be asking value from the user and store it to to, to i so to make our um, program friendly, we'll put a message enter a value, enter an integer, all right? And then make use of scanf, an input variable to get a value, an integer value. So person D. Uh, is for an integer value and then store it to i what's next if you have this i then you can display it. print i'm sorry print if entered value is percent d and then we'll try to display the value of i right and after displaying the value of i what's next 
stop okay so since we we are using an integer um, uh, variable uh, main functions we have to we need to return zero and that's good as we're, we're trying to stop the program or the execution of program all right so this is it we we declared i by saying int i then we we ask for the value of i and then we display it and then stop good as in here on the the, the flowchart okay so to execute this program um we'll try to copy this one and let's start or let's let's go to let's try to use our um online uh compiler okay so all right it's in here i hope my internet is okay okay here it's good so we'll try to paste it here all right if you can remember this is our program are you following so we'll try to click run command so our program now is asking for a value okay going back to flowchart right our program now is asking for a value we are in here read i okay so when we when we tend to supply six and we press enter k six will be stored to i now once our i has already a value then we can display it. display whatever is the value of i so we'll try pressing enter k and this that six will be stored to i and here our program displayed enter value is six all right so this it and after displaying the value of i then it stops right so another example run let us say 78 when you press enter k entered value is uh, 78 okay so uh, it is uh, very simple right? of course the problem is also simple my concern here is on is on your idea as to what, how to use the different boxes in flowchart and what is the technicalities of flowchart and how can we uh, apply flowcharting in terms of analyzing the, the program okay so again um, I hope I was I was able to to explain to you the technicalities of um, flowcharting right so Let's proceed to another example. Write a C program to add two numbers. Okay, so a while ago we, we did discuss a program that will ask for an integer value, and after asking a particular value, we, we tend to display it on the screen. And we did the flow charting, and after the flow charting, we did the programming and we, we run it out and we saw the, the result okay so this time we'll try to solve another problem okay so we'll try to add another page in here and then uh we'll uh, try to paste our problem write a C program to add two numbers and display it of course we have to display it because uh, by just only adding two numbers you cannot see really what is the result right it is only the printf is, is capable of displaying whatever is the value of that particular particular variable okay. now normally we'll start with a uh, terminal box okay and then uh, start, uh, start right then followed by the flow lines okay and then um, I cannot uh, uh, I'm sorry uh, anyway what's next 
to add for two numbers so meaning we 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 have to to declare uh we need to declare variables in here so two numbers so we we need to declare two variables a and uh, a and b and since we are going to add the two values so we we somehow need another variable which is sum or you can use x all right and then uh after declaring the three variables um i think we need to ask this values the two values a and b on the screen so we'll be using this uh display box all right and then um on the display box we have to read the two values a and b all right after asking for these two values what's next get the sum so meaning will be uh computing for the sum right so to compute for the sum we have to say sum is equal to a plus b so meaning whatever is the value of a and whatever is the value of b add it up and place it or store it to to sum okay so that's it and after getting the sum of um a and b all we need to do is to display so we'll just copy this box to have a, a common or a consistent size of the boxes okay then we need to what display whatever is the value of our sum and after displaying the sum what's next stop all right stop your program so start button and uh, stop okay so to to give or to show a flow and connections we'll be using this um, line okay. all right that's it and then uh, declaration okay just uh, create a new one okay and then after getting the sum display it right and after displaying the value of sum stop your program sorry uh, it's not straight This is the problem with smart draw. No. Okay, that's it. So this is now our 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 flowchart for this for that particular problem. Write a C program to add two numbers, okay, and uh, display it on the screen. Now, if we want to create a program out from that flowchart, now all we have to do is to just interpret and translate it. Okay. Of course, um, include is tdio that it cannot be found on the flowchart. Right. Even the int main cannot be. These are not actually uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Then you, you, you declare A and B and sum as integer uh, variables for five or and then uh, we'll be asking for um, we'll be asking for two values right uh, for 
percent D, comma, percent uh, A. And then another one, one, two, three, four. Scan if, right? Uh, percent D, comma, percent B. Now, asking after asking for the two values in here, please take note, we will then compute for the sum. So sum is equal to a, sorry, a plus b. And if you have the value of sum and display it, total is then percent b using the value of sum. All right, this here. Display sum. And after displaying the sum, stop your program so return zero to the main uh, function right so <laughs> from a very simple program to a very simple flow chart and translate it to a very simple c program okay so we'll try running this program we'll copy it here okay so paste this is now our program and we'll try clicking run um button so uh, our program is now asking for two values for example six and eight and uh, total is 14. we'll try uh supplying box plus n okay but so that when when this will be display the cursor should not be here but should be in here okay so it's like clicking run button so instead of, of your cursor here the cursor is now in here because of box class so we'll say 89 and the second value is 90 total value is total is 179 so meaning this is correct our program tend to ask for two values and uh, adding the two values so storing it to sum and display it on the screen all right so that is uh the that is for charting right so if you have a very complex programming problem then of course your your flowchart will also tend to complicate right but then the good thing is that if your flowchart is uh, correct eventually your program is also correct because what you're going to do is to just translate the flowchart box by box literally right? so if you can see in here declare a b and c that's int i right read a b that's scan f Get the sum, sum is going to be this is here. Display sum is print total is I mean simple. Alright? So that's it. that's it. So I, I I hope I I was uh I was able to to explain the the functionality of um flow charting and uh from a particular flow chart uh, goes down to uh, coding you you translate the flowchart into a code and then you can run it out see the the, the screen um, output okay so if you have questions clarifications uh, please do some comment on this uh, video okay Anyway, I'm just here and um, I am so much willing to to create another video again depending upon the demand of my subscribers. <laughs> okay, so here. Now let's, let's move on to the next programming problem. Write a C program to calculate the average value. Okay. So we'll try to copy this. Okay, we'll, we'll add another tab. Okay. 
okay um we'll paste it here now write a c program to calculate average of numbers so um by just looking at this program, uh, if we are to calculate the average of the series of numbers and it's not being specified as to how many numbers that we need to get the average, so meaning we'll be using loop statement in here, okay? We'll be using loop statement, alright? So, um, if I am going to create a flowchart in here, so... Of course, um, I need to start with this um, terminal button and uh, put some level start and then um, um, I need to what? I need to declare variables in here. Okay, so I think I need uh, declare I need one variable, average variable, and uh, let's see value. We'll try. Then if we need under one, no problem. So after declaring the variables, then we'll try to we'll try to to get a value that will that will. Uh, that will serve as our limits for uh, getting the series of value and eventually that series of value will be computed uh, to get the, the, the average okay so we'll try to to read uh, value in here okay and uh, after this uh, we'll try to make use of loop right so is um your i is uh, less than or equal to value okay if this condition is true uh what's next uh ask for ask for value right uh here we lack another another um variables in here we can say a all right and here uh we'll try to ask for a and then after asking for a since we are we are our program demands us to compute for for the average so we'll try to what, what's this we'll try to add oh we need to get the sum sum is equal to sum plus a right so we need to add sum in here all right sum so after getting the sum then it goes back here we'll try to uh, put some flow lines start the program it goes here okay and then after finishing on the declaration um, uh, we need we need to to get the value and that value will will be the limit of our loop statement all right and uh, we'll try to ask if this value is less than or or, or if I, our i is less than or equal to to, to value all right and if this is true 
Okay? If this is true, perform. Right? So, goes down in here. And then, the next one is should be here I'm sorry I'm sorry um, should be here okay and uh, that's it okay so if this condition is true scan F get the the, the sum then it goes back it goes back so I uh, know we need another um, process box. All right. For the implementation. Okay. I hope you're following. Sounds, uh, seems, uh, you know, seems what? It seems, um, it seems. This must not be because we're trying to read. We'll be using this one, okay? So, and then, um, read value, all right? Read value. And after, by the way, in here, while we tend to declare, uh, we can at the same time initialize the value of i by 1, right? Because eventually here in the condition, we are using i in here and our i should start from 1. And it will end up if the value, if i is not less than or equal to value. Where did you get this value? It's here. Read. It's from the user. Okay. Now, if this condition is false, all right, meaning if i is not any more less than or equal to value, then what's next? Compute for. Compute for the average, right? So. A, B is equal to whatever is the sum divided by the value. Are you following? Okay. I, I, I hope you're, you're getting the, the, the one. Right? So we can even uh, place this box in here. Alright? So if this That's a problem with no. It's the problem with uh, we'll try to do some arrangement in here. It's the problem with okay. So if false, right? If false, then. That's it. Okay. I'm sorry. So. If this condition is true, ask for A and then uh, store A to sum and then it goes back. So we'll try to um, transfer it here and we'll add another flow lines in here. Okay. So if this condition is true, read A, 
then get the uh, add a to sum and then increase the value of i by 1 it goes back to the condition if your i is still less than or equal to value read again add it to the the the, the last value of sum then increase until such time that this condition becomes false if this condition is false move down in here and get the average whatever is the value of sum divide it by your value in here and that's the average all right and uh, after getting the average all you have to do is what um, all you have to do is to display so since display, so we'll be using uh, input output box, and uh, we need to display. We need to display whatever is the value of ab, okay, and then add a flow line in here, okay. All right, are you following? Then the flow lines all you need to do is to to terminate the program okay and uh, add some flow lines in here sorry um, I got a problem using this uh, <laughs> okay so type stuff okay so that's it all right so once it so this is our loop this is our for loop and uh, it keeps on right looping while the condition is true and once it becomes false it goes in here and compute for the sum average and display the average okay so uh, a little bit complicated but um, we need to we need to have this kind of uh, tools in analyzing the problem now let's let's move on to the programming we'll try to translate this um, uh, flowchart into a program but prior to that we'll try to, to, to review again okay so here the problem says write a C program to calculate the average of numbers. Um, the problem did not specify as to how many numbers that we need to get the average of. And the problem did not give a given value for that. And even the series of numbers, it's not given. So we, we have to, you know, we have to have our own way of asking values and uh, setting some limits. So what we did is uh, we, we declare i and, this, and at the same time we we initialize it by 1 because eventually we'll be using this i in our loop statement in here. And then uh, we declare average also av, sum, value, and a. Sum is for getting the sum, which is actually our basis for getting the, the average value. Sum divided by the limits is actually the average value. And then a will serve as the, the storage for any values or the series of numbers that will be getting in out from the loop okay and then after this declaration we we will then ask for the value and the value here will serve as our limit for the loop right so here comes a condition box we'll be using for loop here so while i is less than or equal to value then perform this loop and what, what is the content of the loop? Ask for A. And then whatever is that A, store it sum. Increase the value by and it goes back again. If still the condition is true, ask A again. And store it to sum. Increase the sum. Increase I and goes back again. Once it becomes false, it goes in here. Compute for the average. Whatever is your sum, which is actually the result of the loop here, Divide it by whatever is the value, which is actually our limit. Then that's the average. And display whatever is that average. Then stop. Okay. So that is the... That is the flowchart. Okay. 
So we'll try to to convert this into a program. Include that each right. I, I hope you're still following. Um, seems so technical, but you have to you have to digest. This is programming, right? This is programming. Um, int main. Okay. Uh, we need to declare i and at the same time initialize it. Um, av sum value and a right and then um, print if enter a value okay sorry and uh, scan if um, d ma value so this input and output statements here represents this box read value and then we, let's go to here for loop so for i is equal to one this is actually the reason why we, we initialize in here i is equal to one and then check the condition whether i is uh, less than or equal to value and then increase the value of i every time it loops so here right in here this is actually the conditions so, so what's next um, uh, what's next uh, ask for ask for a right um, right here read a ask for a value of a because the problem says we need to calculate the series of numbers and get the average so the series of numbers will be stored at a and while trying to get a we'll compute and store it to sum and every time it loops and ask for a place it to sum right so this is our this is our loop body and once it loops it increases by one until such time that this condition will become false and once it becomes false it will exit from the loop the loop that the end of the loop is the curly bracket so right after a curly bracket is actually another state what is the next statement here compute for the average sum is divided by value and after getting the average what's next display so printf right um all right then ab and what's next stop right stop so uh, to stop is to send a uh, return zero to the main function okay so this one represents the declaration box these two lines here print if and scan if represents this one the read value and this for loop represents this condition Part of this is the initialization of i and the incrementation of i. And uh, this one is actually the loop body. The read a and the sum is equal to. While the condition is true, perform this loop. If it is false, exit from the loop. Do not perform this one and compute for the average and display it and stop. Alright? So, hmm. I hope you're still following. So we'll try uh, executing this program. Okay, so this is now our program. We'll try clicking run, run uh, button. Okay. Our value, our program is now asking for values, supposedly. Supposing we'll try to ask for four values. So we need to, right? 
So, say for example, um, 6, right? 8, um, 10, and 14. So, these are actually the four values. And these four values actually will, every loop, uh, it this will be stored to A. And then part of the loop body is to store A to sum. And whatever is the value of sum, add it by A, and that's then the present value of sum to get the total, the, the series number. So good as we're trying to, we're trying to add 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 14 and store it to sum. Right? Now once the condition is false, it will exit and compute for the average. So the average value is 9. Right? So another example. Uh, let us say 5. So we need to have five values. So to get the average, we'll just say four, 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 four. So if the average is four, then this is correct. Ah, we need to have another var uh, value because we are in need of five values. So this is correct. The average value is four, right? So another example, Say, for example, four values, right? 50, 90, 70, 80. When you present their K, the average value is uh, 72, right? So, meaning um, our analysis is correct by way of using this um, flowcharting tools tool. And then from the flowchart that we did based on the programming problem, uh, we translate it into a program and here we go we, we run it up and we saw the result right so this is uh, this is uh, this is great all right so um, I, I hope I hope uh, you get it well uh, seems you know seems um, to call this one seems complicated but uh, we have to we have to we have to digest all in here because uh, programming is uh, quite possible without without uh, flow charting okay <laughs> all right now let's move on to to the next problem where are we oh we're still in number three now let's have this programming problem number four all right all right a c program to swap two values we are all aware of the swapping techniques right um there are actually uh two ways to swap you can either swap by way of using dummy variables or you can swap by way of creating a formulas and arithmetic expressions, right? So in this particular example, we'll try to, um, we will try to make use of a dummy variable, right? Okay, so let's do it. Um, we'll try to go back to the smart, uh, smart draw and add uh, another page okay and uh, we'll try to to paste the problem uh, write a C program to swap two values so when we are to swap two values of course uh, as we are bound to to create flow chart first so it's have this then followed by a process box for us to what to declare so how many variables we need to swap and we have to use dummy variables declare a I'm sorry um, a b right and we'll try to use dummy as our third variables and after all this one uh, swap 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 so we can we can ask values from the keyboard right or we can assign it 
A is equal to 20, B is equal to fixed constant value. But uh, for the sake of discussing, uh, we'll try to uh, ask value from the user. Right? Uh, so we'll try to read uh, A and B. Right? After reading A and B, then uh, we will what? We'll try to swap dummy is equal to A. Alright. And then next one is what's next? Huh? What's next? We have to say A is equal to B. Alright. And then uh, next one is what? We try to increase or uh, decrease the, the the next one is uh b is equal to what dummy because uh, at first we are trying to preserve the value of a and store it to dummy and here we are trying to store the value of b to a and for our b to have a value of a then we'll try to restore the value will be and it's in our dummy all right and what's next display all right so display very simple display a a and b as our new swap values all right and uh, lastly is and the program stop so we'll try to add some flow lines in here just to uh, flow lines going down to declare another flow lines going down to display right then another flow lines from here to right and another flow lines going down and another flow lines going down right and flow lines in here going down and last flow lines for the termination of the program so this is it Okay, so if you can see, we have a, a single line flowchart because the program is uh, the, the the programming problem is very simple. We have to swap two values, so we declare a, b, and dummy three variables, and after declaring it, we have to scan it. We have to get value from the keyboard for a and b, and then do the swapping in here. Uh, store a to dummy then B to A, then B, uh, dummy to B, and then display whatever is the result of the swap. So let's do some programming. Include what? Is the day that is, right? And then, in main, right? Are you following? And declare, int A, B, and dummy. What's next? Read A and B. So we'll be asking for value from the keyboard. So let's say enter value for A. And then scan if um, percent D, right? Percent A. And another one is. Print if enter value for B, right? I'm sorry. Uh, 
enter value for b and then um, scan f right percent d ampersand b and then what's next we have to swap dummy is equal to a right a is equal to b right then b is equal to done after swapping what's next display the value of a okay a ah print f right a before is percent d and now is percent d right so i know i'm sorry a now is percent d all right and then a Uh, B now is person D, right? And then B. Then the next one is terminate the program. <laughs> so, okay. So that's it. Uh, we have now the the flowchart, and we have now the problem. So we'll try to we'll try to copy this one now take note the declaration part is in here and this print if scan if print if scan if is in here read a and b and these three boxes is for the swapping and this is here dumb is equal to a and uh, display the new value this is here right stop means return zero so we'll go to our online compiler and we'll try to execute our program based on the flowchart let's see if it Runs right. So inter value for a. Say for example one hundred. Inter value for b. Say for example two hundred. A now is two hundred. B now is zero. Why is that so? Hmm. There's something wrong with our program. Ah. Oh. This must be A, right? And uh, we need to issue box less N. We try to run again. One hundred, for example. Two hundred. Presenter K. A now is two hundred and B now is 100. Was there a swapping? There was. Okay, so another example. Another example. Um, 56, 89. A now is 89. B now is 56. Okay, so are you following? Right? Huh? Is flowcharting useful in analyzing the problem or it's an additional burden on your part? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> right? So that's it. You know, this is a good thing with programming. It takes a lot of you know analysis. You 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 tired yourself, you get tired of your brain sometimes, it, it comes in. Uh, no problem, just take it. <laughs> Programming is a very challenging subject, especially if you're the first time or you're trying to learn C. But in a way, when you're done with C and you tend to migrate to another programming language, trust me, it's gonna be easier. Simple. When you're to 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 learn Python, when you're to learn C sharp and everything, a lot easier. Right? Because 
you have a good foundation, a strong foundation of C programming, right? And when you tend to migrate to another programming language, the same analysis, the same way of programming, the it varies on the syntax and the formats of the statements. But as to the techniques in analyzing, they say no pro, no 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 difference, no variation, right? So that's it. Uh, let's have the last example. Um, I hope you're still okay. You're still alive, huh? <laughs> last problem. Write a C program to check if number is odd or even. You're all familiar with this program, right? So we'll try to analyze that program, create a flowchart, and then eventually create a program. Okay, so control C, and we'll try to add another tab in here. All right. I hope you're still following, right? This is for you guys. Okay, this is for you. Um, uh, write a C program to check if number is add or even. Okay, so we'll try to do some flow charting. Um, start, right? And then what's next? We have to ask for two numbers. So we need to declare two variables, right? Two variables. So declare A and B. After that, ask for A and B, right? Ask for A and B. So ask for A and B. So we we have to read A and B. After asking for the two values, then we will try to we will try to to evaluate if ah we need only one. It's only I'm sorry, it's only A. Alright. And in here, it's only A. And we'll check if A is what? If A is, um, if A is an odd or an even number. So we'll be using this one. Alright. Is, is A right are you following modulus 2 equal to 0 right if you can remember the 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 function of modulo is to return the remainder value so if the remainder value of a by 2 is 0 then a is an even number if false then it's an odd number so if this condition is true then display um, display display even right if that condition is false right if that is false then display what display add right and after displaying what's next you exit right you exit okay now let's connect let's do some flow lines in here so from start it goes to the declaration box or the term uh, the, the process box then um, from after declaring you have to ask for the value of a okay and then check if a the remainder of a divided by 2 is 0 if that is the case then um, display even 
if false display add right and uh, after displaying add I'm sorry um, this is the problem with okay so here and here okay that's it so start declare a then ask for a value of a check if a divided by 2 is uh, equal to 0 by using modulo if this condition is true, right? If true, display even. If false, right? If false, display add. That's it. So, let's do some programming. We'll try to translate. Okay? include that each right and then in main you're still alive are you still following <laughs> uh, in a right and then ask print if um, enter a value and then uh, scan if um, you try to make it big percent D um, A right and then um, you check here if your A uh, modulus 2 is equal to zero okay you're following and uh, if true print f value is uh, uh, percent d is even then return the value of a I'm sorry a right else else print present d sorry is add And then no, I need to put else here. That's it. We'll try to move this one. I'm sorry. I cannot move. Here. Uh, int A, it's in here, right? Scan F, get the value of A from the user, it's in here. And check if a modulo 2 is equal to 0. Meaning if the remainder of A divided by 2 is equal to 0, then display even. If this condition is false, do not display in here, but display add. And after that, you exit. Return 0. Alright? So, here, we'll try to, uh, we'll try to, I'm sorry. 
we will try to to copy this one and uh, let's see if it runs okay I'm sorry oh control C and control D okay. control D I'm sorry I need to copy control C and then go in here control P I cannot why is that so for a while control C right and uh, control B why is that so Control D. Oh, sorry. Control C and uh, Control B. Ah, oh, here. That's it. We'll try to execute this program. And let's see if it runs. Enter a value. Say, for example, 56. Press enter. 56 is 7, right? Yes. 56 divided by 2, the remainder is 0. Okay, so run again. Uh, let's have an even number. 77, for example. 77. Ah, add number. 77 is an odd number. 77 is odd. Okay, so run it again. Uh, 2. 2 is an even number. Okay. Another example. Last. 3. 3 is an odd. Okay, that's good. So this is it. Okay, so a very challenging flow charting. I hope your headache is okay, and I hope you're tired now because you know uh, programming is one way of tiring yourself. So let's have a review. Uh, on number one, okay, we we have this right as a program to take an integer number right and then um, an integer number and create a chart this is our flow chart and this is our program enter an integer right and display and on the second example okay uh, write a C program to add two numbers so we have this read A and B and get the sum display and this is our and on the next example that's number three example um, uh, we used for loop statement to get any values, uh, five values, six values. It depends upon the read in here value as our limit. And then sum it up and get the average value. So this is the flowchart, right? A very challenging flowchart. The number five, um, we, we ask for two values and then we swap. We tend to use dummy variables, dummy variable limit. Right. And the last one is uh, this one. Uh, we ask a value and we evaluate it and display even or add. It depends upon the type of value. And we did use modulo operator. And this is our program, right? So um, I, 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 I hope I, I did it well in discussing the technicalities of uh, flow charting. Uh, I hope you, the retention of my discussion is okay and I hope you're, you're enjoying the topic of charting. After this one, we'll try to give another, we'll be posting um, two or three videos and then we'll, I will be discussing a new topic and that's function programming. I tell you, function programming is actually an introduction to object-oriented programming. Because you know, uh, programming evolves, right? So, what our most of the companies now, the programs that they are using are actually applying this a this OOP approach, object-oriented programming. 
you tend to slice a program into several parts and if this part can be reused two times three times or many times you can do it by way of object-oriented programming and for you to have an idea of OOP you have to be a master of function programming we'll be passing parameters we'll be passing values and so on and so forth it's a very nice topic and I know you will enjoy this topic it's also a very challenging topic right so thank you so much for now god bless you please like this channel please subscribe please share this channel to your friends relatives if they are planning to learn programming the best way to start learning is to learn c programming languages thank you so much for now god bless you God bless us.